thanks for inviting us along, Hans. This pretty crazy collection of GT bikes. Must be over 20 in this room. There's a lot of memorabilia, which you're mm -hmm. on as well. Amazing stuff. Like, like if you as closer you look, as more you discover. So this, for me, feels like, you know, when I started riding in the mid-90s, kind of golden era of GTs. But how did you end up hearing about this? Well, you know, this is the collection belongs to Justin, whose house it is, and Clive, their best mates. And Clive reached out to me, and he was an avid rider back in the early 90s. You know, they would read MBUK magazine and became GT fans. And and then they had he had a really nasty accident. I mean, he almost died. Car a car ran into them, and then he was still laying on the street. Another car ran over him. They ridden him off, and then after a year in the hospital, two years you know, of recovery, he came back and, and rode and, but he had, he had a lot of hardship, but then they really, their passion for bikes never went away and they started collecting them. And I mean, this is an unbelievable collection of some really original, beautiful pieces and a lot of history. Probably a lot of memories for you as well, I guess, for me as well, but these really early bikes with the amazing 90s paint jobs. Of course, we've got Zaskars, you would have ridden Zaskars a lot yeah. in the last years. I mean, that was the one that looked similar to this, except I had rock shocks, but I had the spin wheels and this frame. I still have that bike in my garage, and that was a classic one, for example, yeah. I remember for me, this is one of the sort of dream bikes of my youth, especially with the spin wheels. But over here, we've got some more modern bikes as well, but there's a Team RTS, which was the top spec full suspension bike the GT did at the time. And that was the first, the RTS was the first full suspension bike that actually worked. You yeah. know, like the, all the other bikes at the time were pogo sticks. And then this, I mean, a funny story, this RTS right here, well, it's built like Julie Furtado's and actually stamped in the frame Julie. So I think that was her spare frame at one point. But she's the only person ever to win a cross country world championship and a downhill world championship. Yeah, and she crazy. showed up and at last minute she said, okay, I want to do the downhill race. Missy and those guys were already celebrating at the bottom. She was one of the last riders. She came down, had the fastest time and the bike had just come out. Jim Busby, who designed it, was over the moon. But Yeah, that's great. I didn't know that. Obviously, Julie Furtado was a world famous cross country racer. I had no idea she'd done that. We've got some RockShox Judy's. We've got all sorts of retro stuff. Bonza porcupine grips. But actually over here we've got some, what were they, Mag 21s? Yeah. Some SL ties, some titanium bikes. Obviously I used to call these Zizangs, apparently it's Shizang. Shizang, I love them Shizang, Shizang, yeah. Some titanium frame, two with disc drive on the back of that. But these are so early, these, some of these early bikes are U-brakes on the back, aren't they, as well? I know, look at these, the, how tiny those roll. I, I mean, back in the days, the first suspension forks had like 60 to 80 mil travel. And forks came a long way and I mean, look, there's a rock ring. That's what people used to put to protect their chain rings from locks. <laughs> yeah, I guess you would have ridden one, one of those quite a lot for your trials yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But obviously there's a load of memorabilia as well. So I don't recognize these really early, I suppose, kind of, that, is, that, is that trials he top? The no, those are Karate. That was a UK distributor at the oh, time. Yeah. And they did their own closing line. I think it was easier or cheaper. So, yeah. you know, even with this one, this was all the early GT days. But then he's, I remember, so that's the Steve P, Favrel, yeah. Nicholas Billioz era. There's a BMX top, I remember, probably Dale that's Holmes. That's a BMX top, yeah, Holmes would, would be what raced for us in those days. Look at a golden frame here. This was a special promotion. Um, GT did this thing, it was almost like a privateer thing, because whoever was, the, I think it was, whoever was the best privateer at some race, would win this golden bike and then they got to race it in the next race and in the next race they would get on full on pit support from GT and all that and they had like a few hardtails and a few full suspension ones and but I think there was not more than 20 ever made of these golden bikes. So I've got some of these jerseys that Steve Pete gave to me back in the day when he was helping me out but there's been some big names riding for Team GT over the years. Obviously you've been there for a long time but who else have you seen come and go in the GT years? Yeah, I've been there now 37 years. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of cool names. I mean, when I first started with GT in 87, that's when they really got serious with their mountain bikes. And the first guy they hired was like Rishi Graywall, who was a cross-country racer and me. And we started basically Team GT and then 
over the years we had all kinds of guys from Cullinan to Lopes to PD to Nicholas Buyo, Julie Furtado uh, who was the greatest cross country racer of the 90s and there was like Alison Dunlop and like Carter and Martin Mays later, the Assertons, I mean every Almost everybody on the World Cup circuit, I think, has, has had a little GT story to one degree or another. You know, some of them wrote them in their early days and some professionally. I remember just in Europe, they used to have a big truck and the, the support they have for the riders there. But if there's a little bit of memory up there, there's the US semi truck up there. You can just yeah, let picture me, how let that Let me show you be. that real quick. Hang on. This is pretty cool. Oh, I can, but I'm going to move this stem so you can maybe film it. This was, we had a semi rig that was equal to the Supercross semi-rigs now, yeah. nowadays. And this, yeah. we're talking like early, mid 90s. I mean, the golden era of mountain biking. We had a stack team with like top riders. Like. It's crazy, I was chatting to Steve Pete about it, about the sort of the, his big first deal. But at the time, I think they still had Nico and maybe Fabian Burrell and I can't remember exactly, but there was like five hitters just on the downhill Mike team. King. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. know, and like Kali and myself, Jimmy Kite was a slalom ex, yeah. and then Jimmy Killen, he was a junior, Chantal Ducour. So we've nipped outside to get ourselves a bit more space. Take a look at a couple of my favourite bikes. Uh, the Zaska Ellie, obviously this is aluminium frame. Anna dies in this beautiful bluey colour. Obviously not all of this is sort of from the age. It's got some more modern bits on like tyres, because this is a bike that Justin rides, but it's an amazing looking bike. Some of the, the names obviously got the spin wheels, so a lovely XTR original uh, groups actually, well, rear mech and, and shifters and levers that still feel absolutely pristine now. Some answer parts, so the ATAC stem and the Manitou 3 fork. So if I remember correctly, these were elastomer forks that in British sometimes work nice. Even in winter, they got so hard, they would all freeze up and wouldn't work so well. Brake bosses on all these bikes as well. So if anyone remembers these cantilevers, uh, they could work okay in the drive, but you had to pull them so hard, it would actually sort of, it would move, it would flex the frame, the, the bosses. So you needed these brake boosters to stop them from flexing and give you a bit more brake. Over to probably my bike from this era. So this is GT RTS, but not anyone. This is the top spec team RTS. And I love the graphics on that. Uh, again, lots of XTR stuff. DCD, Dave Chain device. So that was a Mr. Crud product you might know from Crud Catchers. It's basically to stop your chain uh, whacking around and, and coming off your chain ring on the bumps. So this is the first full suspension bike that GT did. Uh, it's got a no lean shock on there. Check out sort of how thin that, that sort of goes through the frame there. And a Judy SL fork up front. After this came the LTS, and then I think we were into the Lobo, and then the, the iDrive came after those. So, the first of many full suspension bikes for GT. So Hans, you've got a few bikes at the back of your van you're, you're taking around on your tour. Tell us about some of them. We've got a really old trials bike, 20 inch. Yeah, this was from back in, in 82. This German company made these bikes. They were made in Italy. Rigid triple crown fork and yeah. the skid blade and the three speed hubs, the drum brake in the front. Motorcycle brake levers, look at those levers. It's huge. Yeah, so that bike I rode in 82, 83, and then, um, yeah, and then this right here is the very first bike that GT built me. Gary Turner himself, GT Gary Turner, he built that bike, and that was the first trials bike, and then after that, we made the production bike, the Ricochet, which had then the BMX bottom bracket with the power series cranks and all that, but still, yeah, right. still a triple crown fork and the skid blade, which is missing on this one. And well, then you're up to your... <laughs> <laughs> From this, you're going up to 26 inch bike. It's got some couple of Zaskars. Yeah, this is one of my classic Zaska frames. Not my very first one, but one of the early ones where a lot of the pictures, like the famous wall ride pictures or the snow pictures were taken. I also won um, a Trials World Cup on this very frame bike. And then like fast forward, people had always said, Hans, you must have broken so many bikes. <laughs> and the truth was I had never broken any. It's surprising because 90s mountain bikes generally, if you rode downhill or jumped or did anything much, they would crack eventually. I was probably not riding them hard enough. <laughs> but this one broke because I drove my car over it, <laughs> literally. 
So that's that story, and I've actually that's, I've been telling that story in my talk tour. What about this? We're moving on a few years, but full suspension. What was this called? Uh, IT1. Yeah. The GT IT1. It was a gearbox with an internal transmission, which is not in this bike right now. Full suspension. The shock is obviously missing, but I had the full bike like this, and it got nicked. But then I have now a frame still. Omar gave me this frame, and one of these days I need to build it up. But it was kind of a futuristic bike, and yeah. people still think gearbox bike will will maybe one day. I mean, people have talked about it for a long time now, to be fair. But still, you've got that sort of top tube that comes out the back with the GT on there. Still a lot of really obvious GT touches. Yeah, very cool. So yeah, that's a. A few of my things that I dug out of the garage for today. Thank you very much to Justin and Clive for inviting us, and Hans, of course, for inviting us to check out some of this amazing stuff. I'm sure there's some mountain bikers of a certain age, like myself, who are watching this, got very excited, overly excited about some stickers and some logos they haven't seen in a long time. So, super cool, and uh, I guess I should uh, pick one to take home, and uh, it's got to be a NASCAR, hasn't it?